the issue of mandatory vaccines continue to spark debate. President Cyril Ramaphosa recently said government is looking into vaccine passports, but can you legally be forced to take a jab? To understand this, I'm now joined by Yako Spot, National Manager for the National Employers Association of South Africa. Yako, thanks for your time. So this, of course, is not a blanket uh, ruling, a rule rather, when it comes to what the president is talking about, even when it comes to employers saying that all staff must be vaccinated. That's not the case, right? Good evening. Um, yes, that's correct. You know, what, what, what the president is talking about is also something different. Um, I believe that that seems to be more in connection with mandatory vaccinations across the board. Um, however, what currently is before employers is a directive that's been issued by the Department of Labor on the 11th of June, um, which basically states that an employer may elect to implement a mandatory vaccination policy. But it's not a blanket mandatory vaccination policy. It comes with a lot of ifs and buts. What it says is that should an employer elect to implement a mandatory policy, he has then to identify those employees which he wishes to um, ma have vaccinated. And those employees must be chosen from or identified from a pool of employees who either by, by virtue of their working conditions are susceptible to, to infection or are high risk of infection or people with comorbidities. Um, so it's not all employees. It's employees due to, who, due to, like I said, due to their working conditions or susceptible to, to infection or people with comorbidities. Um, once those people have been identified, then there's a whole process of consultation and taking into account those individuals' right to bodily integrity as well as their right to opinion and belief um, as envisaged in the Constitution. Should such an employee then refuse still to take a vaccine, um, the employer has to consult and educate and give information about the vaccine. Should such an employee still refuse, then the employer should try and accommodate him by virtue of other measures such as wearing of masks and screens and social distancing and rostering um, of shifts and so on and so forth. Um, and only thereafter, um, if an employee still refuses to be vaccinated and an employer cannot accommodate him, then the employer may possibly dismiss him. So it still can't force him to take the vaccine, but he may, might face dismissal. Yeah, but you still have uh, some employers, and of course you know the HRC has asked for people to come forward if this has happened. You get some employers who make it seem as if it is compulsory and they don't give any consideration to your beliefs or why you don't want the vaccine. They literally just fire you. And that, of course, is not allowed. Are there grounds constitutionally for employees to challenge them? It's not only constitutionally. Um, there, are, there are two issues. There's the constitutional grounds. Um, you know, and... and, and we said a lot about that in respect of, you know, rights may be limited, of course, um, which is contained in the Constitution. But that limitation must be reasonable and it must be, through a law of general, applic general application, it must not be arbitrary. This directive seems to be quite arbitrary as it only identifies or targets a small number of employees, those who cannot be accommodated. Um, you know, the question is then, but how have they been accommodated since March last year? what happened now that an employer cannot accommodate them with undue hardship. So that's the one issue constitutionally speaking. And secondly, you, ha you are working within the framework of the, the Labor Relations Act as well as the Employment Equity Act. So there's a pr procedure that you need to follow. And you, you need to prove that, that your, your dismissal is fair, both procedurally and substantively. And, and we believe it's going to be very difficult for an employer to show that it was fair to dismiss an employee um, because he cannot could not accommodate him, um, taking into account all the other measures that are available to accommodate such employees. So what will happen in an instance where you're not high risk, so to speak, you know, public facing, et cetera, in terms of the job you do? Let's say you're a call center operator and you're actually working from home because that's now been made possible. We've learned that over the past year. Are there any grounds then for the employer to say that since you don't want to be vaccinated and don't want to come back to the office, there's no need for us to employ you and we're looking at a retrenchment process? 
no, in terms of the record, there are no grounds for them to do so. You know, if we move out of 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 the employment environment and and just work in a, an environment where we so within the context where we say everybody must be vaccinated, that's a different issue. Um, then it becomes a limitation of rights issue, and it becomes a, a, a greater good argument, but that doesn't apply in terms of the context of the directive. So no, if you can accommodate an employee, even with comorbidities, you will have no grounds to dismiss them. All right, great to know. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Jacques Swat, the National Manager for the National Employers Association of South Africa.